Hello, I'm Carrie Bladorn, the director at Pioneer Park Historical Complex in Rhinelander and an Oneida County Fair Committee member. Welcome back for another episode of Oneida County History. This program is brought to you by the Oneida County Virtual Fair and sponsored by the Hodag Store in Rhinelander. We're standing on the old Sioux Line track on the far east side of Oneida County, just a short distance away from the once bustling community of Gagin. Practically all that remains today are the memories and a spot on the map to remind us of what was. Let's take a trip around the county to discover some of Oneida County's ghost towns. Come on. What is a ghost town? It can have different meanings. A once busy community devoid of its inhabitants and left to the devices of mother nature perhaps? For this video, our ghost town definition is not so dramatic. It is a village or community that had its own post office and other town infrastructure, such as a store, church, or school that has since disappeared. It having been turned to memories memories that fade with each passing day and are written little about in the history books. Of course, I recognize many of the communities in this video are beloved by the people that still reside in them today, but they are a shadow of their former selves throughout history, thus making them ghost towns of Oneida County. Oneida County was at one time much like the wild wild west, but instead of cowboys, prospectors and gold mines, we had lumberjacks, trees and sawmills. Instead of a gold rush, we had a timber rush. Imagine the same rough and tumble towns and films of the Old West right here in Oneida County, full of rowdy loggers, saloons, boarding houses, and sawdust flying everywhere. Such were the boom days of early Oneida County communities. They also had homesteaders and entrepreneurs trying to carve a living out of the Wisconsin frontier. With the logging ventures at the turn of the 20th century, many villages popped up amongst the towering pines of the virgin forests and along the freshly laid rail lines. As the timber resources were exhausted, there often became nothing left to sustain many of these early boom towns. Some held on for a while, shifting gears and inviting tourism such as fishing, and vacationing in the clean, pine-scented airs during the golden age of resorts in Oneida County. But because of many factors and advancements in society, people moved on and the communities they built ceased to exist, except in name only. Here we are in Gagin, named after early pioneer and British-born Daniel Gagin, a man who we could devote an entire episode to, discussing his Daniel Boone-like buckskin outfits monocle in one eye, and his beautiful Ojibwe wife, but we'll have to save that tale for another time. Not too long ago, Gagin was at the crossroads of two important railroads, the Sioux Line and the Chicago Northwestern. At one time, this was a bustling community with a post office, railroad station, general store, school, sawmill, and a thriving town. Today, much of Gagin has been hidden in the history books. This community was once a hub of the Wisconsin cedar industry, by where thousands of cedar posts and shingles were produced and sent all over the country by the railroads that intersected the village. Some of the features that can still be seen are the sawmill hot pond, old rail spurs, a boarding house on a hill turned residence, and a little cemetery hidden in the woods. Gagin isn't alone in the lost chapters of the local history books. So too are over 25 villages that once existed and had their own post offices in Oneida County, but have since faded into obscurity. Consider a time when transportation moved a lot slower. Early Oneida County roads weren't much more than dirt wagon trails through the vast forests, 
and so stops were needed at shorter intervals than they are today. So every few miles on the road or rail line, you had communities form. Long lost villages like Satuit, between Lake George and Lake Thompson, Roosevelt on the north end of Moan Lake, Robbins, which later became Sugar Camp, situated on the narrow gauge line used later by the Thunder Lake Lumber Company, or Manson near present day Manson Lake, the hamlets of Woodboro, Goodnow, and Cajun. Some of these villages remained townships, but without a proper town. East of Rhinelander, about halfway to Monaco sat the rail stop of Malvern, Wisconsin. Still noted in modern gazetteers and on official weather maps, this town, like its fellow Oneida County ghost towns, once had a post office, a train station, a school, which was later moved to the town of Pelican and remains to this day, and a number of homesteads. We're here in downtown Malvern, walking on the old Chicago Northwestern Railroad line. Behind me once sat the Malvern Boxcar Depot. Not too far away is a well-constructed foundation that held a railroad trestle for the Chicago Northwestern Line. Let's go take a look. We visited the community of Jennings in a previous video, but we didn't mention the adjacent villages of Lennox or Wolfgram. Oftentimes, the only thing left of these towns are the cemeteries that inter the early pioneers they were built by, resting forever beside the very towns that lived and died with them. Unfortunately, we won't have time to visit all the ghost towns hidden in the regrown forests of Oneida County. For many of them, the trees that supplanted them are all that remains. Villages like Hobson, Pennington, Enterprise, Rainbow, Wicklow, Rance, and Garth, to name a few more, some familiar places and others completely lost to the ages. But for the people who made their living and raised their families in these long lost communities, we remember them today, if only for a moment, and in memorializing them in this video, they can exist once more, Oneida County Ghost Towns Alive Again. This program was brought to you by the Oneida County Virtual Fair. We hope you enjoyed this installment on Oneida County Ghost Towns. I'm your host, Carrie Bladorn, and I'll see you next time for some more Oneida County history.